Hey, good day, Math 30-2s. Today we're going to look at logical reasoning and set theory. Last lesson we looked at using words and or not in mathematics. Today we're going to look at sets and set notation. So in math, a set can be defined as a collection of distinct objects. <clears throat> For example, the number of faces of a die form a set. Sets are usually denoted by capital letters or by a description inside curly black curly brackets. An object is a set in a set is referred to as an element. For example, the number five is an element in the set of numbers of a die. There are three general ways of defining the contents of a set. You can list the elements of the set. You can use a description of the set in words. Or you can use set builder notation to describe the set. Recall the curly brackets together is read as the set of uh, this line straight down represents such that, and this interesting looking E is called a member of. So if I want to read the set builder notation, the set of X such that X is less than 7, or X is an element of the natural numbers. That's how that's read. The number of elements in set A is written as N at A. So in the above example, the number of elements in set A is 6. The number is 1 through 6. Note that the number 2 belongs to set A, but the number 8 does not belong to set A. To express this, we can write that 2 is an element of A, whereas 8 is not an element of set A. The order of listing the elements in a set does not matter. For example, a set may have the elements 1 and 2. They can be listed as 1, 2, or 2, 1. Let's look at example 1. Consider the following two sets. P is a set of whole numbers less than or equal to 3. Q is the even whole numbers less than 10. Let's complete these questions. So the elements in P are 0, 1, 2, 3. The elements in Q are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Complete the following number of elements in P, number of elements in Q. So there are four elements in P, and there are five elements in Q. Write set P using set builder notation. So give it a try, and let's see what it looks like. So set P and set builder notation should be X such that X is less than or equal to 3. X is an element of the whole numbers. All right, which of the following is set builder notation, which describes set Q? X such that X is less than 10, element of the whole numbers? No, doesn't talk about even. E such that E is equal to 2X, where X is greater than or equal to 0, but less than 10, and an element of the whole numbers. So if I pick the number 9, that's less than 10. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 is not a whole number less than 10. It can't be B. Let's try C. E such that E is an element of 2X, where X is between 0 and 4 inclusive, and X is a whole number. So if I try the number 1, 1 times 2, one of the elements is 2. Yes, it is. If I try 0, 0 times 2, one of the elements is 0. If I try um, 2, 2 times 2 is 4. There is one element. If I try x is 3, 3 doubled is 6. That's an element. If I try 4, which is equal to 4, 4 times 2 is 8. That's one of the elements. So I guess the correct answer should be C. So let's highlight C. All right, moving on. Terminology used in set theory. Betty is defining sets using non-negative single-digit numbers. From the list of non-negative single-digit numbers, she defined the following sets. E is a set of even numbers. L is the set of whole numbers less than 7. O is a set of odd numbers less than 7. List the elements of each set in the space above. We use these sets to aid us in understanding some terms used in set theory. So away you go, fill these in. So set E is the even numbers. 
single digits. Whole number is less than 7 is set L, and odd number less than 7 is set O. Universal set. With the context of any problem in set theory, there is generally some larger set that we have in mind. We refer to this set as the universal set. It is a set that contains all the elements under consideration and relevant to the problem. State the universal set for the example above and call this set U. Where you go. So set U would be the non-negative single digit numbers. A subset is a set of a set that contains some or all the possible elements from the previously defined set. All sets we deal with in a problem must be subsets of the universal set. And every set is a subset of itself. So in set notation, the symbol right here is used to represent this relationship between sets. For example, if E is a subset of U, or E is a subset of U, since all elements in E are also in the universal set U, we denote this as E is a subset of U. Is set E a subset of L? If so, write this using the subset notation. If not, use not a subset notation. Right. You go back and you look up. Is E a subset of L? Do all these numbers in E appear in L? No, they do not. So we should use this notation and say E is not a subset of L. All right. So set O is a subset of L, which is a subset of U. Write this relationship using appropriate symbols. So what would that look like? Uh, it would look like this. O is a subset of L, which is a subset of U. All right. Empty set is a set that contains no elements. The empty set is a subset of every set. The notation for empty set is a zero with a line through it. For example, the set of all odd numbers is the set E. The set of all numbers in set E is the empty set. There are no odd numbers in set E if you look above. All right. If we look up above, set E is even numbers, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. No odd numbers. Complement of a set. Oh, sorry. Provide another example of a set that is empty. Um, well, we could say there are the set of even numbers in set O. Right? You look at set O, there are also no even numbers in set O. That's an empty set. All right. Complement of a set. The complement of a set, like set A, is a set of all elements in the universal set that are not in set A. So a complement of a set is denoted by A prime. Write the complement of set E using the appropriate notation. So what is not in set E? All right, how would that look? That would look like this. E prime. should equal the set of numbers, the set of numbers that are not in set E. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 are all the numbers that are not even, but the single digits that are non-negative. Okay. Consider the following two sets, A, natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 3, and B, the natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 5. Explain why the set of natural numbers less than 20 is a suitable universal set. Well, because all the elements being considered are in that universal set. So you could write that. List the elements of the following sets. Elements in set A. Natural numbers less than 20 divisible by 3. Well, that should be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. Those are all the elements less than 20 divisible by 3. Perfect. Elements in set B. Natural numbers less than 20 are divisible by 5. Well, those should be 5. 10, 
and 15. And a prime, or the complement of a natural number is less than 20 that are divisible by 3. Well, these would be the ones that are not divisible by 3. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19. All those are not divisible by 3. And they are... less than 20 natural numbers. Write a description of the elements of set B in words. Well, the natural numbers less than 20 that are not divisible by 5. Those would be the complement, right? Elements of the complement of set B in words. Natural numbers less than 20 that are not divisible by 5, right? D. Set C's and natural numbers less than 20 that are divisible by 6. State whether the following are true or false. Is C an a subset of A. Well, so C is a subset of A. Well, here's set C, 6, 12, 18. Those numbers are part of set A, so th this is a true statement. True. Part 2, C is not a subset of B. You look at C, they're not part of B. This is also a true statement. And you look at part 3, A prime is a subset of C prime. So are all these elements part of all the ones that are not 6, 12, and 18? Yes, that is also true. So those three are all true statements. Great. I'd like you guys now to try questions 1 through 7. And we'll look at those when we get a chance.